Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. So I am doing a pick a card reading on ghosting. So this will be for those of you who have been ghosted by someone and you're having a hard time letting it go or you're needing some closure about it. Hopefully this reading will give you some answers and give you some sort of relief so that you can, you know, close that chapter and move forward. And I originally did film this video as a general reading, but it's kind of like um, when I was doing the reading, there was too many different messages like there were too many different storylines that I was picking up on like too many conflicting messages so I decided to refilm it and to uh, basically do a pick a card reading so that I can go more in depth of each individual storyline or each individual message that I was hearing for different groups so I think that it'll just make more sense it'll be less confusing you know in this format so that's why I'm doing it in pick a card format um, and I'll also be extending this I know that's kind of weird for pick a card readings usually there's no extended for those but I do want to extend it for this specific topic because like I said in my last video um, I was feeling very strongly that a lot of people needed this video and I wanted to you know give the option of people purchasing the more in-depth um, reading after they hear their messages so I will be extending this reading so after you pick your pile make sure you go to the description box and you'll see the extended for each um, particular pile make sure you click on the right pile and purchase the right extended for each pile so um, let's dive into it for those of you who are new here um, the way that the, these readings work you will basically look at the screen and look at the individual piles and go towards whichever one your intuition is telling you so just kind of take a deep breath you know close your eyes if you have to and just ask yourself which one will resonate more and then open your eyes and then go directly for the one that you think of first like don't let your mind fool you and second guess yourself your first thought is what your intuition is telling you so go towards that and the more you watch these pick a card readings the easier it will be for you to pick the correct pile because your intuition will get stronger and stronger and if you feel like you are you know pulled towards more than one pile then you can watch you know numerous piles so like I said just kind of pause um, pause this video and then you know choose your pile and then in the description box and in the pinned comment down below you will see the timestamps that will correspond which with, with each um, deck so in this reading we will be looking at um, someone who ghosted you how they're feeling about you now um, why they did the things that they did and then you know some any other messages that will help you to move forward so I hope that this is helpful and let's dive right into this reading okay group number one so let's dive into your reading and like I said in the intro I will be extending this so make sure when you check the description box you um, click on the link for the extended for group one if you want more in-depth messages so let's get into this um, we're gonna start out with the overall energy like what what's the energy that was created between you two within your connection um, we have the ten of cups in the reverse so the Ten of Cups in the reverse is basically like a lack of emotional fulfillment. So it looks like within your connection, both of you or um, the other person, I'm thinking it's both of you, felt extremely dissatisfied emotionally. I think that there may have been some plans for both of you moving forward, like you wanted um, to build something happy with each other like you wanted some sort of future with each other but I feel like there wasn't enough stability like there was a lot of um, I'm feeling like a more of like a fantasy sort of energy like you know when you meet people and um, or you meet someone and you just feel like um, kind of swept up in the romance of it all and you get sw you get swept up in the feeling but it takes more than a feeling to sustain a relationship like both people have to be you know grounded in a way like both people have to have um, you know realistic um, a realistic mindset about what can actually be built because sometimes the things that we want to build with another person is not necessarily realistic because um, sometimes there can be an issue with compatibility or both people have different like two different ways of doing things and there's like very little compromise so I feel like that was kind of the issue here um, I feel like I am getting that there was some one person in the connection which it could have been the other person or it could have been you um, was more self-focused and so that could have been something that kind of killed the connection or that was an issue within the connection it was like one person who was a little more self-focused than the other and that can cause like an imbalance within the connection so um, that's what I'm getting for what was created between you two now why they ghosted we have the wheel of fortune in the reverse so basically they ghosted because they were trying to avoid 
some sort of tragedy from happening. It's like they were foreseeing that the connection was going to end in tragedy or that something was going to go wrong. It's almost like whatever was going wrong in the connection, they in their mind thought it was going to continue. And so instead of doing the mature thing and, you know, trying to speak it or work it out or speak to the other person about it, um, they decided to jump ship and set instead, which is really unacceptable. Honestly, I don't really condone ghosting at all when it comes, especially when it comes to reasons like this, like this is something that you can communicate to someone, you know? Um, but yeah, I feel like this person was kind of like in their heads, um, analyzing the relationship and kind of analyzing what was going wrong in it and then thinking that it was going to continue and decided that it was best to kind of part ways. But also what I'm seeing is that this person has something else going on in their life. It wasn't just the connection. It was some sort of series of unfortunate events in their life. Like um, you may not have known about this or maybe you do, but there was some something going wrong outside of your connection. And I feel like it did weigh on them. And so it looks like they didn't just jump ship with you it looks like they pulled out of a lot of things like they could have like pulled away from like friends or um for some of, for some of you i'm hearing they deactivated their social media um i'm just really feeling strongly that there were other things that were going on outside of your connection again not really an excuse to ghost but this person was struggling with the nine of swords um being here i do well i pulled the nine of swords as the clarifying card i mean um I do sense that this person was definitely struggling, struggling. They were suffering, which again is no excuse. You know, you can, you, you can send like a text like, Hey, this is too much for me. I have to go. Goodbye. You know, but, um, yeah, that's what I feel like having with this person. I see like they were in their head a lot. They were thinking a lot. Um, they just felt like they had a lot on their plate. Um, they were weighed down with a lot of, um, intrusive thoughts and things of that sort. Like right before bed, I feel they were very extremely anxious and, um, yeah, that's why. It looks like that's the reason for them ghosting. It wasn't just about your connection. It was other things going on in their life, and they pr pretty much just decided to, like, pull the plug on everything, um, thinking that it was going to basically alleviate some of the pain or some or kind of lighten the load. Um, how they feel about the connection. Now, we have the eight of pinnacles in the reverse. So it looks like they try their best not to think about the connection. I feel like they try their best not to, um, you know, focus on it. It does cross their mind still, especially if you, um, thought if you talked about living with this person in the future, or you planned some sort of future with them, that definitely still crosses their mind. And I feel like they don't want to connect to that. Like if they connected to that, if they allow themselves to sit and think about, you know, the good times or the things you've had planned with each other, they would then have to feel very guilty about what they did. So they try their best not to connect to that thought and they try their best not to focus on like the details of the things that you have planned. I feel like this person is trying to find some sort of balance in their life. Like they are just feeling very imbalanced and they're trying their best to find their balance. They're trying to find their happy is what I'm hearing. Um, yeah, just a lot of this energy is like this person has a lot of heavy energy and again i feel like this is the person who's self-focused in the connection because like i said i feel like one of you was more self-focused and so i feel like that may be them like there is a little bit of selfishness that is here again it's no excuse to ghost they still could have said something this this reading is not like making excuses for them it's just kind of giving you an overview of you know what could have been going on with the lover's card being here um this is your advice moving forward Basically, um, it's saying that um, there's a need to kind of, what's the best way to say this? There's a need to kind of see this person for who they are, because I feel like after someone ghosts you, sometimes you can sort of romanticize them, especially if you've had really good times with the person. But the fact that they ghosted, it kind of lets you know that they are not someone that's good under pressure, like, because it looks like pressure is the main reason why they could have, you know, jumped ship. Like they, they felt like too many things weighing down on them. And so they just, they, they run. Um, and I feel like that is a big, huge red flag because, you know, in life, when it comes to our connections, when it comes to the people we love, you know, we should be able to lean on them and we should be able to depend on them and rely on them. Like there's going to be things that you're going to go through in life that will be extremely heavy. And anybody who you're connected to, they need to be able to, you know, help you withstand that. So a person who is just really, really bad under pressure and, and it's OK, like some people are more sensitive and, and pressure gets to them more. But if they're really bad under pressure, but they run like that's when it's not okay like if they just jump ship they don't explain to you they don't say anything that's when it's not okay so imagine like something horrific going on in your life and then you go to lean on this person and then they pull the plug then you see what i'm saying it's like it's almost like this is giving you a 
heads up or a warning about what was yet to come in your connection. Because like I said, there's going to be things you go through in life, you know, illnesses, deaths in the family, things like that, where there's going to be a lot of pressure applied and you need someone that's more solid. You need someone that's able to communicate. Um, not to say that you need someone who's going to be able to be, um, like superhuman because like I said some people can't handle like the pressures of life sometimes and they need to retreat but you need someone who's solid enough to at least communicate with you because like I said think about how devastating it would be if something horrific or tragic is going on and then they ghost you know what I'm saying so this person folds under pressure and they it's kind of like you're better off you know without them whether you know you really realize that or not because you could be romanticizing the connection a lot so your advice is kind of to see them um, for who they are and to, to try your best not to romanticize them. And um, also to see that there was a lack of compatibility, even though there was a lot of emotion. Because, like I said, the Ten of Cups in reverse, it's like um, a fantasy, like both people being swept up in the fantasy. It's not to say that the fantasy is fake. Like, it's not to say that the feelings were not real. Um, they look like they were very real. But, again, there are things that when you're trying to build a future with someone or you're trying to keep them in your life, there needs to be some sort of like, um, there needs to be some sort of um, compatibility when it comes to like stability, you know, when it comes to like, okay, how do I handle things? How do I communicate? What am I like when I'm angry? What am I like when I'm under pressure? It's like those types of things. Sometimes we overlook when we're in a connection with someone where we feel a very strong pull emotionally, we overlook all the things that really matter when it comes to like um, the hardships of a connection. That's when you really get to see like how strong your foundation really is. And it's like they kind of prove that there was really no stability or no strong foundation. So yeah, basically that's what I'm seeing here is like a need to see that there was a lack of compatibility here. And so now it's, it's time for you to, um, basically try to see this person, you know, for who they are. It's okay to grieve the fantasy. It's okay to to grieve the connection. Because like I said, I do feel like there's strong feelings here. I don't mean to say fantasy as in like there was no connection here at all because I see a connection here. Um, but it's time to, you know, give yourself or allow yourself um, kind of time to grieve and see this as a connection that um, you now know exactly what you want in a person moving forward and what you don't want is what I'm seeing. You need someone who's a bit more solid. So um, that's it for the messages for this group. Um, I'm going to extend this, like I said, so I will leave the um, link to the extended video down below and we will dive more in depth into these messages. Like we'll dive more into like uh, the thoughts of this person, like the feelings and things of that sort. Like we'll dive more into their subconscious a little bit and see, you know, what makes them the way that they are, because that can always give you, you know, a little bit of relief and a little bit of closure when you really get to understand a person and why they operate the way that they do. So I will leave the extended in the description box down below and in the pinned comment. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you over on the extended extended. And if you feel called to watch another pile, then you can also watch another pile. Bye. Okay, group number two. So let's dive into your reading. And just like I said in the intro, I will be extending this reading. So if you do find this um, helpful or you find that it resonates, you can hear more in-depth messages about it in the extended video. And I'll leave the link to that down below. So just click on the group to extend it and it'll take you right to the video. So let's dive into this. We're going to start off with the overall energy between you and this person. So we have the friendliness card here in the reverse. Hmm. So I'm seeing here that this was a connection that you were very, very intertwined with each other. Like there was a lot of energetic entanglement between you two. I'm seeing that it was almost like hard for you to tell where you start or where you stop and they begin. Like that's how much there was like this, this intertwining of energy. So you could have spent a lot of time together, but it's interesting because I'm hearing that this is definitely a past life connection. I'm hearing that very, very strongly because there's no way you could be this intertwined with someone's energy unless you've either been married for years and years and years, or you've spent multiple lifetimes together so that's what i'm sensing here is that you did have past life ties with each other and that's why your energy was able to be so interconnected in the way that it was that's why the connection was so strong i also am hearing that you reminded them of someone from their past and they remind you reminded you of someone from your past so it's like um it's sort of like being pulled towards each other because the energy was familiar 
And it doesn't have to be like they reminded you of an ex. It could be like they reminded you of your mother. Like maybe there's certain traits that they have that your mother had or, you know, you reminded them of their mother, you know, something along those lines. But it's like past life recognition, but then also you both remind each other of someone from your past that was significant. I'm also seeing here that um, this could have been an on and off again sort of connection, like things would end and then start again and each time they would end and start they would get more and more passionate or you would get more and more connected with each other so sort of like an on and off up and down sort of relationship is what i am feeling um moving on to why they may have ghosted you okay so we have the outsider card here this person has very clear abandonment wounds and they are too what's the correct word here Lazy. I'm not going to lie. That's what I'm hearing. Emotionally lazy. They're too emotionally lazy to actually do anything about these abandonment wounds that they have. It's very clear to me that they fear abandonment and they fear rejection. And so they could pull the plug before the other person does. Like if they feel like you're going to abandon them or they get like some sort of... uh I wouldn't call it like their intuition telling them because it's not really their intuition. It's more like a fear. So I wouldn't say if they get an intuitive knowing that they're about to be abandoned. It's more about it's more like them getting like a fearful thought that they're about to be abandoned and they're mistaking it for intuition. And then they turn around and abandon you before you can abandon them. It's what I'm feeling. And when I say they're emotionally lazy, I don't mean to like you know be shady or dis disrespect them. It's just that when sometimes when people have very very strong um, negative subconscious programmings or traumas and things of that sort, sometimes it could just be easier for them to just act off of their defense mechanisms instead of actually trying to heal. So that's what I, he that's what I'm getting for like emotionally lazy. I want to pull one more card for this just to get more in depth. Ooh, okay. A card just flew right across the room. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. So the way that they cope is one ghosting before they feel like you're going to go before they feel like you're going to ghost or before they feel like you're going to reject them they do it first and two they like to just distract themselves so they'll go missing and then distract themselves like they'll go hang out with their friends or they'll go party or it's like some sort of escapist energy here they're just really not dealing with their own traumas their own triggers their own inner wounding they're not dealing with it whatsoever so this is what they do they'll ghost um, and then they'll go and distract themselves themselves with other things is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing for a small group of you, this person could even have like an alcohol problem, like a drinking problem, sort of. And um, that has nothing to do with them. Go well, so, sort of. I was going to say that has nothing to do with them ghosting you, but it kind of does because it just kind of shows that there there are some unhealed wounds and they are not really facing it. They are kind of turning their back on it and, um, you know, just acting off of their defense mechanisms and escaping the best way they know how. And a part of escaping is ghosting. So this, this person could have ghosted you. And then if you looked on their social media, you could have seen them like out and about with different people and different friends, like, which is very hurtful, of course. But I feel like, again, it's, this is nothing personal, even though it really is painful and it's not acceptable. Like I'm not making excuses for this person at all, but, um, it's not personal to you as in there's something wrong with you. This person is an escapist for sure. And it has a lot to do with their own fear of abandonment. I also feel like um, this person has, what am I hearing? This person has this like desire to put on a front or put on a facade. So a part of them ghosting you could have been also you getting too close to them and seeing their, through their facade in a way. And that could go, that could go different ways for different people. Because a facade is not always anything that's terrible. Like a, a facade is not always like them acting like, you know, them being manipulative and acting like they're someone that they're not. Sometimes it's like maybe they're a very sensitive person and you got so close to their sensitive core that you got to see that. And then they feel uncomfortable and then they, you know, they pull the plug and ghost. But for some of you, it could have been that maybe they weren't exactly who they said they were. And then you un uh, you unveiled some of those things or called them out on some things. And then they could have pulled ship or they could have jumped ship because of that. Ooh, okay. See, I broke this reading up into different piles specifically for this reason, for getting too many messages. And here I am getting too many messages again. So I hope that that makes sense for most of you. I feel like, again, this person fears rejection, fears abandonment, and therefore they ghosted. Um, also, this person is an escapist. And so they'll ghost and they'll go and focus on other things and kind of escape. 
And for some of you, it's like this person was putting on some sort of facade or you got too close to them or saw through something and then they had to, you know, jump ship, which goes along with their fear of rejection and abandonment. It's like them fearing that if you see them for who they really are, then they will be rejected or abandoned. So let me go ahead and ghost, you see. So moving on to how they feel about the connection now. We have the experiencing card in the reverse. So they feel like the connection didn't get like a full chance to flourish or a full chance to blossom like they almost feel like there's still things that they wish they could have done with you still things that they wish they could have experienced um but i feel like they try their best not to fully think about it i think that this is a person who is very good at kind of explaining away um any of their uncomfortable thoughts so if they have a thought like you know i really miss that person and there's so many things we didn't get to do together they'll then explain it away like you know well you know that's life and things happen and not everyone's meant to be in your life life so you just got to move on like they're able to really explain away very well um uncomfortable feelings is what i'm sensing so that they can kind of move past them i'm gonna pull one more let's see Yeah, this person has like a lot of inner conflict because I'm seeing two two different sides. So it's like this person has a lot of inner conflict. There's this part of them that does feel like they made the wrong choice by ghosting. And that, again, there's so many things that you didn't get to do together that you didn't get to experience together. But then there's like that other side of them that's like convincing them like, no, 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 it's fine. You did the right thing. Like the angel and the devil sitting on their shoulders sort of is what I'm hearing. Let me put one more. Yeah, this person, um, they are filled with a lot of anxiety over this. And that's why they have to constantly kind of talk themselves down because there's like a lot of like anxious energy within them. And I feel like a part of them knows that they're only ghosting or running because they're running from themselves. And so that's where the anxiety comes from. Because it's not really you that they're running from. They're really running from themselves like you have seen something in them or seen through them in some way that makes them feel so vulnerable that they feel like they're going to be rejected or abandoned and they are refusing to face you know why that is happening under the surface so there's a lot of anxiety that's within this person and so they are very good at you know trying to push that anxiety away by talking themselves down or by um logically looking at the situation and kind of like twisting it in order to absolve themselves of any type of like guilt or negative feelings but the anxiety is still there under the surface because the wounding is still there so they can run all they want to but they can't run from themselves forever is what i'm seeing the master card is here for your advice so it's interesting you're being asked to basically do what this person does except do it better um and when i say do what they do i don't mean ghost i mean to um actually look at this situation from a higher perspective because like i said they do this in a way to basically push away any thoughts that make them uncomfortable but you're needing to do it in a way that actually helps you to heal and move forward like you're not doing it to or you're not being asked to look at things from a higher perspective in order to just bypass it like they're doing you're being asked to look at this so that you can really obtain some sort of wisdom from this and it'll help you to move forward like as soon as you see the higher perspective and you see exactly what you learn from the situation it's going to be very easy for you to say okay i know exactly why i had to go through that because sometimes the thing that's keeping you stuck the most is when you're kind of questioning why why did i have to go through this why did this have to happen like this it's like the questioning of why which comes with this this level of not accepting things for as they are so when we do see things from a higher spiritual perspective it's like we're able to accept things as is and it really really does help like it does wonders and i'm not saying that you have to completely um again bypass any emotions you should give yourself a lot of time room and energy um a lot of time and room to grieve and put your energy into yourself like pour love into yourself i'm not saying to bypass it but um seeing it from a spiritual perspective will help you in that coping process so basically what you're needing to do is look at um exactly what you think this person has taught you is there something within you that is mirroring back to you through this person one second i just draw my cards okay wow totality card came out 
So for some of you, this could be that what this person is mirroring is your desire to really, really deeply connect with another person. But it could also be the desire to deeply connect with yourself because this person is so intertwined with your energy. Like your energy is so mixed up with each other. It wouldn't be surprising to me if your craving for this person is actually a craving for yourself. That's how this happens a lot of the time when we have that deep, uh, that deep, deep, um, entanglement with a person energetically. It's like we actually have a part of ourselves that we have not fully tapped into and that person is showing us. So there could be like a, a trait that this person has that you really desire to connect with within yourself. And that's why you could have been so, um, so entangled and intertwined with them. I feel like I've said entangled and intertwined like 20 times throughout this reading. So them ghosting could be a reflection of this part of you that has been rejected that you have been kind of ignoring or that you have been detached from or that you have not, um, you know, fully tapped into. So there's a need, it's going to be different for different people, but there's a need for you to look at the characteristics or the character traits that drew you towards this person in the first place. I feel like there's a part of you within you that has those exact traits that you think, you know, is only in them that you think isn't in you, but it actually is in you, but you have just lost touch with that part of yourself. And I feel like once you, tap into that part of yourself you are going to desire them or crave them less again you still do have to kind of grieve and um, mourn depending on how you know hurt you are over the situation you still have to give yourself time to move forward but I think that taking that advice um, and seeing things from that sort of spiritual standpoint and that sort of healing standpoint is really going to help you with your healing process like a hundred percent all right, so I'm going to dive deeper into these messages in the extended video. Like I said, I will leave the link to that in the description box and in the pinned comment in the comment section. So thank you guys for watching. And if you want to see more in-depth messages on this person and we'll dive more into their psyche, then I will see you in the extended video. Bye. Okay, group number three. So let's dive into your reading. And like I said in the intro, if you would like more in-depth messages, um, if you find that this reading resonates with you, then I will link the extended video in the description box. Just make sure you click group number three extended video. All right, so let's dive into this group number three. We're going to start with the overall energy between you and this person. We have the mature woman card, the sudden wealth card, and the false person card. So I'm seeing immediately that um, in your connection with this person, there was an imbalance when it comes to the maturity level. So I'm guessing that you're the one who was a bit more mature than they were. I am sensing that you met each other in a way that was very like odd or unexpected, like you kind of crossed crossed paths with each other in a strange way and it's like you both saw, sort of saw it as like fate or you know at least you did you saw it as like fate or as like destiny like wow I'm so lucky that I randomly came across this person um, feeling like you sort of hit the jackpot I guess you could say and what I'm seeing here is also that some of you thought this person was like a prize for you or like a reward because before you met them you had removed yourself from a situation that was very hectic or very toxic or you had done a lot of healing work on yourself in order for you to learn and mature and then this person randomly crossed your path so it's almost like wow you know the universe must be rewarding me for the work that I've done or for the situation that I removed myself from like the universe is now opening up this new door for me to explore a connection with this person so you really felt like just lucky to have come across this person and you felt the connection was one that was very sacred and one that was very uh, fulfilling for you but the false person card is here. So I feel like this person wasn't being completely honest with who they were. They weren't being completely honest with their intentions. They were kind of wearing a mask. And that's not always something that's malicious. Like, I'm not saying that this person was like a pathological liar. Um, but they definitely weren't presenting themselves to be... They weren't... How do I put this? They definitely were not presenting their, their full selves to you. They were hiding some part of themselves that could have been a deal breaker for you and they were hiding it which is not right because then it's like you are feeling lucky to have this person and you're willing to invest in this person but it's under false pretenses because you don't know the full story you don't know that there's something about them that they were hiding but i feel like you know now now you see whatever it is that they were hiding about themselves maybe it's that maybe they were hiding that um they actually are not that compassionate as they try to make themselves appear you know it could be anything um but yeah it's like you thought you were lucky because you were connecting with the person who they presented themselves to be. Let's put it that way. 
And I feel like with the mature woman card being here, you were more expressive about your feelings and you were the one who wanted to communicate more. And I feel like they had poor communication skills and it looks like you were just more equipped or more ready to invest in something emotionally than they were is what I'm seeing. So why did they ghost you? We have the unexpected income card, the privileged lady card, the coffin card and the lover's card. Okay. So what I'm feeling very strongly is that this person may have ghosted because they wanted to see if they could find better, which I know that's very hurtful to hear and it is despicable. I don't condone this type of behavior at all. I always tell people, you know, make sure you end your connections with integrity because if you end them by ghosting and things of that sort and then you try to just move forward, you're not going to be blessed that way. You know, you're not going to be able to move forward until you, you know, pay the karmic debt for ghosting someone or for just throwing someone away you know you don't just do that and then you run into something new and expect it to be like a blessed connection you know so that's exactly what happened with this person i'm feeling because the unexpected income card came out sideways so to me that means thinking that they could find something better thinking that the grass is greener on the other side and then it turns out not to be and then they end up having regrets so that's what happened here with the privileged lady card whoever's side who how do i put this whoever's side they chose over yours that person turned out to be who they oh my god how do i put this i can't talk um <laughs> that person turned out to be not who they thought they were so the same way you felt kind of duped by this person they felt duped by someone who they chose over you and this does not have to be romantic like i said i'm not saying your romantic partner ghosted you and went and got into a new connection if that is the case then i feel like you would know that already i feel like this isn't a reading where that would be revealed to you um it's something that you would kind of already have an inkling of or that you will already know but it doesn't have to be that it could also be that maybe their friends didn't like you so they ghosted you in favor of their friends you know what i'm saying so just you know take it as it resonates and you know these messages are for clarity they should never leave you feeling you know very uh weighed down and confused so if you had no clue that they were dealing with someone else then i feel like this reading isn't for you because it's not to instill that type of heavy heartbreaking you know energy within you it's just to give you clarity you know i hope that makes sense always have to give that disclaimer so like i said whatever they whoever side they chose the grass actually was not greener on that side and this person actually ended up betraying them in some way shape or form and not being who they thought they were and that connection whatever they chose over you is actually over now with the coffin card being here it's like it's dead even if they're still investing in it or trying to invest in it it's like beating a dead horse is what i'm hearing let me pull one more and again that goes back to what i said about having integrity and closing out your connections you know with integrity and with closure and compassion because this person it's like it would have been impossible for them to build something healthy or build something better quote unquote because of the way they ended things with you it's like it's just the universe is, is not going to allow that to happen we pull one more the spare card yeah so whatever it is that is ending on their end this has been over for a while actually i'm hearing it's been over it was over before it started so they have even gone through their grieving process already. I don't know how long this situation has been going on that they chose, but I guess it just depends. Like if they ghosted you like a very long time ago and immediately jumped into something else, I feel like it fell apart shortly after that. Like it fell apart very shortly after they ghosted you and they have, you know, taken some time to, to grieve this or if they haven't taken time to grieve it, then they have they're avoiding it they're avoiding the feeling of grief that came with whatever this was falling apart because then they would have to face that they made the wrong choice as well so i feel like this could be like avoidance energy like trying to avoid that overall feeling of i made the wrong decision yep great fortune card in reverse yep thinking you found something better thinking you found something of high quality and it turns out that you didn't um this and i'm also hearing this other person could have ghosted them or your person could have ghosted that other person there's some ghosting going on in their connection as well very very odd um yeah and again like i said it doesn't have to be romantic i'm not trying to plant in your head oh your ex moved on to someone else so that you can get paranoid and then you can go snooping like let me see you know if you don't know this then it's probably not for you this is for those of you who you would have already had an inkling of this at least is what i'm seeing yeah this is avoidance trying to avoid 
the realization that they made the wrong choice, trying to avoid the decisions that they've been making overall that have just been very poor. But, you know, like I said, it's karmic energy. It's going to boomerang. You have to close out your connections with compassion. You cannot treat human beings like they are disposable trash or, you know, you will get that energy right back. And that's what happened to them. So how do they feel about their connection with you? Oh, boy, I feel like you're going to slightly laugh at this. So how they feel about their connection with you is they feel like your energy is still home to them. Whatever connection that you had with them, it was authentic. You were giving them your authentic self. So you feel like home to them. You feel like family to them in a way. But, but they still were not willing to do the work in order to maintain the connection with you. So it's like you feel like home to them. You feel like family, but they're not willing. They were not willing to do what it took to actually keep your connection afloat and keep it healthy. This person just was not willing to put in the work. And I feel like they cherish the, the aspects of the connection that were, quote unquote, easy or beneficial to them. But when the going gets tough, it's like they get going, you know, very confusing energy here for this person. But I said you're going to probably laugh because I'm seeing here that how they're feeling about the connection is that they would actually want to work things out with the occupation card. And it's so strange because it's like they were not willing to do the work to keep things afloat. But then they're coming up as wanting to work things out just very bizarre energy here i feel like they really want to reap the benefits of your connection again that's what i'm getting from this so um yeah like i said they would want to work things out with you but they know that you think less of them now they know that you don't think too highly of them now because of what they have done they know that um you have bad negative thoughts about them i feel like some of them also are aware that you're focused on yourself you are really driven towards some sort of goal right now and i feel like they know that somehow or they see that or someone's told them i don't know but they know that you're very self-focused right now and they know that they have left a very bad image in your mind of them so they i feel like they wouldn't approach you this person is very immature the mature man card is literally coming up in the reverse this person is very very immature so just to recap that in case it got confusing they are thinking back to the good aspects of your connection and they are not really fully understanding that they could have kept those good aspects if they would have just been willing to do the little bit of work required to um, get through the hard times. You know, it's like the hard times is when this person really just showed you that they weren't mature enough to handle, you know, the difficult challenges that c sometimes come with, you know, a genuine connection. They wanted all of the positive aspects of it and all the benefits of it without wanting to put in the work with you. And by work, I mean, like, you know, when you communicate, you expect them to communicate back open openly and honestly that's doing the work and they don't want to do that they would rather just have an easy free-flowing connection without the work it reminds me of like the people who are like people who are married for a long time and their marriage is going through a rough patch and then they go and have some sort of like rendezvous or affair with someone because the other person is so like carefree and easygoing and you know my wife doesn't understand me she argues with me and my mistress makes me feel so young and carefree and then they leave the wife for the mistress and then they come to find out that the mistress is also a pain in the ass and now all the problems that they were trying to avoid at home they now have with the new person you know and I'm not saying that that's your scenario I'm not saying that the person had a mistress or anything like that that's just an example but it's just a clear example of how people think the grass is greener not understanding that the grass is not greener on the other side it's greener where you water it so if you would have just stayed in the connection and watered it and not tried to go find something quote-unquote easier then you would still be in the clear and you would still be happy but now it's like you're elsewhere trying to force things where it doesn't fit or having another connection fall apart because you wanted to be too lazy to do the work and you wanted to take the easy way out and again excuse me and again um <clears throat> Oh my God, I almost choked on my water. Again, like I said, it doesn't have to be romantic. This could be someone who uh, ghosted you because their friends didn't like you. And they're just, it's easier for them to just fit in with their friends. And so they ghost you and then their friends end up doing something to betray them. And then they see you were their real friend, you know, all along. You see what I'm saying? I hope that that makes sense. So, um, yeah, they would be willing to work on the connection, but I feel like they would not try to approach you because they know they've made an ass of themselves pretty much. All right, so the last two cards are the um, the advice cards for you, and then we're going to get into the extended. So we have the Judication card and the Expectation card. Hmm. For some of you who this person tries to come back in, you need to think long and hard before you actually allow them back into your life and into your presence, because I feel like 
very strongly that for some of you this person will try to come back in it's not for everyone of course this is a general reading but for a lot of you this person will try to come back in and they will try to tell you that they want to work on things they may even suggest counseling um this could be like a marriage like honestly i'm not sure if you may like if some of you are married to this person this could be a small amount of you but they may try to come in and i'm also feeling like they may try to not directly come in but send somebody in to get back in your good graces like send a family member of theirs or a friend of theirs to be like hey have you heard from so and so you know they they were talking about you you know they miss you or whatever something like that um you need to think long and hard that's your advice here to think long and hard before letting this person back into your life because i feel like they have failed to meet your expectations completely like you you required the bare minimum of them and they still couldn't meet that bare minimum and you have to think to yourself if they were willing to ghost in favor of something else you know that then fell apart why would you then want and i'm not okay i'm gonna be careful what i say because i'm not trying to sway anyone's decision because it's completely up to you if you choose to deal with this person again you just have to evaluate why why it is that you would want this person back into your life now for those of you who this person is not coming back um because for some of you i'm seeing they're, they're not going to reach out there's a need for you to kind of look back on the fact that, again, they did not reach your expectations. They did not meet your standards. They're, they are very far below what you deserve. They're very far below your standards. And realizing that and truly seeing that for what it is, is something that would possibly help you to get over them, um, you know, much more quickly. I'm going to pull one more really quick. courthouse adjudications okay final decisions okay so i'm also hearing that for your advice you're being guided to make a final decision the door is still open for this person for some of you some of you are actually waiting for this person to come back and you're needing to make a final decision to close that door okay and i know that that's difficult because if you really want to wait for someone it's like it's so hard to say okay well i'm just you know closing the door completely um one advice one piece of advice that i've gotten from another reader i forget who they said you know if you really feel like you want to wait someone wait for someone don't wait indefinitely set some sort of date like okay if this person doesn't come back by this date to make things right then i'm closing the door completely and you know set like set a date so there can be some sort of finality because being in limbo and waiting around for this person it really is putting you in a very um, negative headspace that quite frankly you don't deserve to be in because I'm feeling like you tried your best in this connection and they are just operating from their own place of immaturity you know and I understand if it's I mean I understand that this could be hard because for some of you you've been with this person for a very long time or you've been you know connected to them for a long time so naturally you do expect them to come back and you know make things work and things of that sort and you are tempted to wait but like i said you just have to have some sort of finality because your life is on hold and you're in limbo and it'll be very hard for you to move forward if you do not make that final decision to you know close the door at some point so that is it for those messages um if you would like to hear more in-depth messages about this person about what's going on in their mind their psyche and things like that then I will get into that in the extended video. And sometimes that is helpful because when we can understand why a person operates, sometimes it's much easier to, you know, kind of um, give ourselves that closure. So um, again, I will leave a link to that in the description box down below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click on group three extended video and I will see you guys on the extended video. Bye.